India represents one-sixth of the world population and consists of ethnically, geographically and genetically diverse populations with several thousand endogamous groups. The load of genetic disorder is relatively high in some Indian communities due to consanguineous marriage practiced in those communities. Most common genetic disorders due to such wedlock are 6 PD deficiencies, Down syndrome, sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. These genetic disorders happen when a particular gene is dominant or when a mutation is present in both copies of a recessive gene pair. Genetics is a branch of biology concerned with the study of genes, genetic variation and heredity in organisms. The technology has the potential to identify and prevent hereditary diseases and it can also be used as a possible cure for heart disease, AIDS and cancer. The human genome holds an extraordinary trove of information about human development, physiology, medicine and evolution. The scientists of the early 20th century was primarily focused on communities which they found to be original traces. They divided the humans into four races, Caucasoid, Mongoloid, Negroid and Australoid. The indigenous population of India was assumed to be intermediate between Caucasoid and Australoid. Edgar Thurston named this type Homo Dravidic and described it close to Australoids with Caucasoid Indo-Aryan admixture with the population of around 1.3 billion consisting of 4,693 communities, thousands of endogamous groups, 325 functioning languages and 25 scripts in India, we have a vast reservoir for genetic studies. It assumes greater significance. In India, considering its large population size, complex demographic history and unique social structure. The study of genetics helps us understand the biological programming behind all life forms. But what exactly is the science of genetics and what does its future hold? The potential of genomics to transform medical care. So if you are thinking of next generation medical care, you must have genomic services within the country. Genetics is the study of heredity. It is the expression of traits and how they are passed from generation to generation. For thousands of years, humans have observed this inheritance of traits and implemented their knowledge to breed and domesticate plants and animals. However, the science behind inheritance was only starting to be understood in the mid-19th century. Around 1865, an Austrian monk and botanist, Gregor Mendel, published the results of his hybridization studies of pea plants. In his findings, he noted the role of factors that influence the expression of traits. These factors later became known as genes. Based on his studies, James Watson and Francis Crick determined the structure of DNA in 1953. Each population differs in terms of language, culture, customs, physical features and genetic architecture which is determined by DNA, the hereditary material that is passed on from one generation to the next. Each human has between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. This collection of genes is called a genome. It determines a person's traits by influencing factors on a cellular level. Genetic information is stored in every cell's nucleus. These structures called chromosomes carry this information in the form of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Most cells in the human body would contain something called the DNA in them. This DNA is about 3.3 billion chemical alphabets and this DNA is inherited from our parents and we also transmit it to our next generation. Encompassed within this DNA is a lot of information, a mind-boggling set of information on how we look, how we behave, what sort of diseases we carry, what sort of uh, traits we have, how long we will be, what is the color of our hair and so and so forth. DNA is a double helix of nucleotides. 
chemical compounds composed of sugar and phosphate molecules along with the bases thymine, adenine, guanine and cytosine. These segments of DNA are what we call genes and it is within those genes that chemical compounds provide the coding for all information about a person's inherited traits. Just imagine there are 3 billion pairs of nucleotides in every human being and that is approximately twice the population of India. In 1990, a publicly funded project called the Human Genome Project was launched to identify every single gene that goes into creating a human being. The group of publicly funded researchers that eventually assembled was known as International Human Genome Sequencing Consortium IHGSC. From its inception, the Human Genome Project welcomed collaborators from any nation in an effort to move beyond borders. To establish an all-inclusive effort aimed at understanding shared molecular heritage and to benefit from diverse approaches. In 2006, the first human genome was sequenced. This took 15 years and $3 billion. Researchers had sequenced the human genome. But what does that actually mean? How do you sequence someone's genome? Genome sequencing is figuring out the order of DNA nucleotides or bases in a genome the order of A's, C's, G's and T's that make up an organism's DNA. Today, DNA sequencing is mostly done by high-tech machines. The entire DNA from a source is first fractured into millions of small pieces. These pieces are then read by automated sequencing. But the very question a layman would ask is why we need genome sequencing? The idea of human sequencing was floated in around 2000 and in 2003 a draft resolution was completed. Ever since the human genome, it opened up a fresh perspective on the link between disease and the unique genetic makeup of each individual. Nearly 10,000 diseases including cystic fibrosis, thalassemia are known to be the result of a single gene malfunctioning. While genes may render some insensitive reaction to certain drugs, but on the other side genome sequencing has shown that cancer too can be understood from the viewpoint of genetics rather than being seen as a disease of certain organs. Here again the question arises, what are the advantage of genome sequencing? 70 million people in India suffer from any one or other genetic disease of which rare genetic diseases are in significant proportion. It is estimated that about 64 out of 1000 live births in India carry a congenital birth defect. Yet the molecular basis of a number of diseases remains unknown. Even with all these arguments, the question still is why we needed indigent project. At the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology, we started a program called Indigene. Indigene stands for Genomics for Public Health in India. So as part of this exercise, what we did was we collected 1,400 samples across the length and breadth of India representing all the major populations that we have. The idea was to sequence all the 1,000 plus people and use that information for as a reference map for driving genomic medicine in our country. The Indigent program was led by the CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology in collaboration with Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB, Hyderabad and funded by CSIR India. CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology, IGIB, is a premier institute of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, engaged in research of national importance in the areas of genomics, molecular medicine, bioinformatics and proteomics. Indigen is the beginning of India's ability to participate in the P5 health, the new age health economy and a new societal structure where we can try to prevent as many things as possible. 
The program was targeted to undertake whole genome sequencing of thousands of individuals representing diverse ethnic groups from India. The objective was to enable genetic epidemiology and develop public health technologies applications using population genome data. This was the first time that such a large sample of Indians was collected for a detailed study. The first human genome sequencing from India was concluded in 2009, which formed the foundation for Indigen program, but this program was officially launched in 2019 in India. The CSIR drafted about 1,008 youth from across India from a pool of about 5,000 by organizing camps in several colleges and educating attendees on genomics and the role of genes in disease. Some students and participants donated blood samples from where their DNA sequences were collected. The prime motive was to include representatives from every state and diverse ethnicities. So the technology that we use for sequencing human genomes is what has been employed popularly across the world, okay? what is called a sequence by synthesis. And there are several companies that internationally have developed this technology and have uh, enabled it as a commercial product. So we have adopted those technologies, but more importantly, what we are really after is to use these technologies to identify what encompasses the basal genomes of the Indian subcontinent. Both CSIR IGIB and CSIR CCMB use the Illumina Nova Sequence 6000 sequencing system to generate the results. The project cost around 18 crore rupees. The driving motive of the Indigen project was to understand the extent of genetic variations in Indians and learn why some genes are linked to certain diseases. Once such knowledge is established, the CSIR expects to tie up with several pathology laboratories who can offer commercial gene testing services. Technology and resources promoted by the Human Genome Project will have profound impact on biomedical research and promises to revolutionize the wider spectrum of biological research and clinical medicine. The outcomes of the Indigen will be utilized towards understanding the genetic diversity on a population scale, make available genetic variant frequencies for clinical applications and enable genetic epidemiology of diseases. The understanding of the changes which occur in the genetic behavior will help us to suggest applicable and effective medicine for the patient. With the genome sequencing, one will be able to trace his lineage. Rapid and more specific diagnostic tests will make possible earlier treatment of countless maladies. Medical researchers also will be able to devise noble therapeutic regimes based on new classes of drugs, immunotherapy techniques and avoidance of environmental conditions that may trigger disease, and possible augmentation or even replacement of defective genes through gene therapy. Understanding genomics will help us understand human evolution and the common biology we share with all of life. The outcomes of the Indigen will have applications in a number of areas including predictive and preventive medicine with faster and efficient diagnosis of rare genetic diseases. We have come to a situation where the end use of this technology raises some questions. How will it translate into social well-being? We would like to use the power of genomics and the power of indigen to enable identification of people who carry these rare genetic diseases so as to enable a molecular diagnosis. Also use that to understand who else in the community are carrying the genetic disease because remember India is stratified in communities in many ways because we still follow uh, traditional lines of marriage practices and which means that we still live in large communities. Using this information, individuals belonging to that subgroup can make informed decisions to get screened for particular mutations. Those found to contain genetic mutations can take necessary lifestyle changes or seek medical assistance to lead healthier lives. We have implemented a, a genome card which, through which we are able to communicate back to the individual in a privacy protected and secure manner. 
So the indigen program is a work in progress. We started out by sequencing 1008 genomes, but currently we plan to scale it up to at least 20,000 genomes in the next few years so that we could cover the length and breadth of India and be able to enable genomic medicine at the clinical level. Those who got their gene mapped were be given an Indigenome card. The card has been designed with privacy, data security and scalability in mind, which is vital for personal genomics to be implemented at a population scale. The analysis of genomic data combined with medical information from victims of rare diseases can reveal the mutations that underpin the disease. This data can be used to create improved diagnostics and therapeutics for targeting the disease. Data assessments can massively impact healthcare in India, either by helping couples raise healthy children or by creating avenues for better medical interventions for preventing or treating diseases. The major challenge of a project of this scale was adequate and representative sampling of the population. The genome projects in other countries target about 100,000 genomes. India's target of 10,000 genomes in comparison is a good start but needs substantial expansion. It also needs clarity on the sampling approach. Does the sample identify a representative set of each subpopulation or for each rare disease? An exercise of a massive scale as this has to be led by a specific predetermined objective. The second challenge is of consent. A publicly funded project of this nature may likely start off as a research project based in academic labs, but the creation of diagnostic or therapeutic tools would be facilitated by sharing the data with commercial ventures. Thus, clinically actionable information has to be only shared where robust scientific proof exists, linking the mutation to a disease. To implement this, clinicians and genetic counselors need to be trained to determine best medical intervention in the context of the particular patient. Hence, capacity building to gather, analyze, interpret and communicate the genomic data will determine the success of this project. We went ahead and trained over 280 clinicians across 70 centers around the length and breadth of India. The idea here was to also train our medical colleagues in the new science called genomic medicine. So that when patients approach them, they have the tools and the knowledge to be able to answer and use this new medicine called genomic medicine in their clinical practice. The whole genome sequencing of individuals drawn from across the country has now been completed, enabling benchmarking, the scalability of genome sequencing and computational analysis at population scale. The outcomes of the Indigen will find applications in a number of areas, including faster and efficient diagnosis of rare genetic diseases. To enhance the initiative, another project has been launched which will be the first human genome mapping project in India. It will help researchers get closer to developing effective therapies for treating diseases such as cancer. In the first phase of the initiative called the Genome India Project, the genomic data of 10,000 Indians will be catalogued. The Department of Biotechnology, DBT, has initiated the project. The DBT will build on its own experience of genomic cataloging and rope in 22 partner organizations including public health institutions that have obtained regulatory ethical clearances. Investigators in hospitals will lead the data collection through a simple blood test from participants and the information will be added to biobanks. DBT will capture data from more than 10,000 people over the next three years and link them to its biobanks and biorepository. Over the past few years, advances in genome editing technologies are making constant headlines. Being precise, relatively inexpensive, easy to use and remarkably powerful. Genome editing technologies have the potential to transform biological research 
and can greatly impact human health. The advances in genome editing can be traced back to quiet beginnings in the 1990s. However, the current surge in the number and range of applications of genome editing technologies largely owes to the introduction of the CRISPR-Cas9, a genome editing tool that can be used to make precise and targeted changes in the DNA sequence with much ease. The simplicity of the CRISPR platform compared with the earlier tools has led to its rapid adoption and wide expansion of its applications. Recognizing the power of genome editing techniques to study and manipulate the genome, the DBT has been engaged in promoting research and innovation in the area of genome engineering technologies and their applications to make them accessible and affordable for wider use in research and development. Efforts have been made to encourage R&D programs in emerging genome engineering technologies and their applications through focus calls for proposals in different areas such as development of new methods, tools, processes and platforms for genome editing, improvement of existing genome editing methods and novel applications of genome editing technologies in agriculture, bioenergy, environmental research and human health. We have two programs. One is the Genomics for Understanding Rare Disease India Alliance Network in short form called the Guardian in which uh, clinicians across India refer samples of people who cannot afford, uh, who have a genetic disease but cannot afford to get their genome sequenced. We do that for free as a commitment to the society and we give them the interpretations back to the hospitals so that the, people, the patients can be genetically counseled. The second program is called the GOMED. Genomics for enabling medical decisions. So, from the genomics, the findings that we do from genomics is converted into a low cost diagnostics and this low cost diagnostics is one given free offering from the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology to any needy person who has a reference from a government hospital. The consortium involves roughly 280 clinicians and researchers from about 70 medical and research centers around the country. In conclusion, the Indigen project embraces scientific technology for the advancement of Indian healthcare, ushering India towards the new gold standard of precision medicine. Policies that can enable the project to work optimally need to be framed to ensure its smooth and sustained functioning.